The older I get, it seems like the weirder young people get. There used to be a time where young people made sense. It was about rebellion, being edgy and crazy. You gotta do crank off a titty dancer. Those days are over. Now we have new problems. Guys are becoming traps and four-year-olds are getting sex changes. All sorts of craziness is going on that frankly I don't care to understand and you can eat me. Now that Star Wars has hit the movie theaters and has left its stain upon cinema, it has left many people distraught, disheartened, and completely and utterly emotionally obliterated. As a long-time Star Wars fan, I'm already dead and indifferent towards the series. It just seems to get worse and worse with each film. Thankfully, they're probably going to take a break for a while. Praise the Lord. And I'm not even religious. But the people who seem to take it the hardest are the Rilo fans. A Rilo fan is someone that is obsessed with Kylo Ren and Rey having an on-screen romance. In some sort of move to try and save face or appease fans, but the weird thing is they tried to appease the wrong fan base because Disney is stupid. They decided to add a kiss with Kylo Ren and Rey. That was the fan service they decided to uh, accommodate. Instead of saying, maybe we should do a better story, they're like, throw in a kiss between Ren and Rey. That'll make people happy, said J.J. Abrams as he quickly scurry to his back room to find more clips to steal from other films. But it wasn't, you know, there's as much of a brother-sister thing between Kylo and Rey as there is a romantic thing. So it's not like literally like a sort of like a sexually romantic kind of thing. It's more like they're just bound together in this in this crazy, you know, spiritual way that again felt romantic to me, but it was like Yes. But it was like it's like if you listen to John Williams when he first The ensuing madness is nothing short of awe inspiring. I will now read you tweets from psychopaths. How the rise of Skywalker ruins Rey's story. The case for Rilo in Star Wars, the rise of Skywalker. Good work, Lindsay. You're writing some good journalism here. My God, I don't even want to talk about the fact that for some reason they can like transport things to each other through the force. I don't know what they're thinking with this movie, but they just screwed the force up on such a level. It is like, oh my God. Oh my God, this is Lindsay Romaine. So she is a writer. My God, the bar is so low. No wonder I've been contacted by gaming websites looking for me to write for them if you see shit like this. Lindsay Romaine wrote, Brought me absolutely no pleasure to write about my favorite Star Wars character ever like this, but I had to work through my feelings. Spoiler alerts, I'm devastated. Mother of God. Devastation, not because it was a bad film franchise, but because it didn't turn into the love story that you so achingly desired. How come when women show like a level of madness when it comes to fandom, it's totally fine? It's like, this is okay, this is cool. But one fat kid lays down with a waifu pillow in a subway and everyone loses their minds. Gwenny85 Rilo, whatever the hell. I'm already seeing Antis making fun of Rilo, who are cycling through depression because of all of this. Would it kill you guys to be a little more human? Who's cycling through depression over this film? Just because Kylo Ren dies and they don't get married at the end doesn't mean that you need to lay in bed for the next three weeks. If you're going to be distraught over a relationship, I don't know, get distraught over ones in your own personal life? A real one, maybe? I'm pretty sure these chicks had more compassion for Kylo Ren than they had for the men in their real lives. Mar replies, They have already made fun of me. When I said there's no way I can ever accept Ben's death, I had to block them because I still can't find the strength to overcome my pain, much less their unkindness. You're, you're in pain over a fictional character being dead. The guy's alive, you know. He's, he's alive and well. I think he's married, living his life, counting many millions of dollars. Meanwhile, you probably work a dead-end job, and you're worried about the fate of a rich man. God help us all. You know I'm right, wrote. At J.J. Abrams, no less. She wrote, I'm going to kill you just like you did with Ben. YouTube has a terms of service where I can't say that to anyone. But Twitter lets the fleur fly when it comes to women being upset on Twitter. I mean, Jesus Christ. You know what's funny? They make out the old school Star Wars fans to be the absolute worst. Oh, they're man babies. Oh, they're evil and hateful. Oh, they didn't like Rose Tico. Nobody liked Rose Tico. Nobody's buying her toys. 
hell, nobody's really buying the Disney toy line for Star Wars. I think there's a bigger issue there. But point being, you don't see us running around screaming at J.J. Abrams we're going to kill him because he helped kill Star Wars. Most of us don't care. We're just like, oh, this is terrible. Screw you, J.J. Abrams. Take some writing classes. This broad is mad enough that she wants a man dead over fictional characters. Welcome to the end of 2019. I warn you, 2020 is going to be worse. Mark my words. Don't even bother with a New Year's resolution. <laughs> like, for real, you'd be wasting your time. The next year is going to be a clusterfuck. She to LA. Oh, my God. Do I really want to read this? It's, like, so stupid. God have mercy. Spoiler blog hour posted. My pain for Ray is so deep. I feel like I may die if I try to process it. My mind keeps skirting around it. Like, how could you have any pain for Ray, dude? Literally. Kylo Ren dies, right? I don't care. Spoiler alerts. Kylo Ren dies. He fades into the force, dude. Only the greatest Jedi Masters could do it. Yoda lived 900 years. That's how he figured it out. N meanwhile, Kylo Ren does one force heal and he like fades into nothingness. That's how bad he wanted to leave the film. He literally had them edit him out in real time. Point being, he dies, fades into nothingness, only clothes are left. Ray's distraught for literally two seconds. She's on the X-Wing, Luke's X-Wing no less, perfectly fine. Goes back to the planet, everyone's celebrating. Ray had no problem. She got over Kylo Ren's death so fast, it was absolutely insane. Like, nobody knows how to write there. The pacing of the film was frantic. The only way you could understand Rise of Skywalker beat for beat is if you were on speed. Anyway, she wrote back, I'm not handling it well. Mother of God. Women losing their shit over a dead character in a movie. This is the, the world you live in as a man. Congratulations. I pity you for not growing up around the time I did, because I had some fun. You have dark days ahead of you, children. If you're young now, pack it up. The party's over. You're either dealing with nutty chicks, feminists, or women that are going to manipulate you emotionally and kill your soul while crying over dead cartoon characters. Anyway, if we look some more at her tweets, I think the person done dirtiest by this malignant state of a movie was Ray. What? Ray? What about me as a fan? <laughs> Oh my god, the person who suffered the worst through these bad Star Wars movies was the character Rey. Not the fan base of the franchise that has been killed. Whatever. Everyone was done dirty by this, but Rey's character was destroyed in the most horrifyingly sexist way possible. I mean, Ben Solo's dead, but at least he got an arc? I'm so confused. Let's continue. I'm in too deep now. This is like when you find really weird pornography that you can't believe is real, but you watch it anyway to confirm it. Then you're disgusted by what you find. After years of desperately trying to convey how important she was to other women, after years of actively saying that women can be more than the men we're related to, that we deserve character arcs as full as men's, this is what we get. Infantilization, isolation, his power. I'm confused. I'm guessing what this, I'm um, going to guess is also a feminist, is alluding to is the fact that she is Palpatine's granddaughter. So she has his power, which means she has his DNA, which would make sense. She's his granddaughter. She shares some sort of character traits. It's usually what happens when you are descended from someone related to them directly. Facts of nature or life. But I don't understand what her problem is. You see, the reason why this movie sucked is because it was poorly done. They didn't plan ahead. Two, they were so focused on making Rey absolutely godlike. Of course she doesn't have a character arc because she's a Mary Sue. Rey does everything well. You can't have a character arc if everything works for you. It's blatant logic. Look at hot chicks on Twitch. How many of them have a character? How many of them actually have a personality? Next to none because they didn't need to develop it. When you are given everything, you don't need to develop or grow as a person because you you don't face any adversities. Literally, Rey is space Jesus. She's healing wounds. She's like communicating with wild giant snakes that don't attack. She's able to fly practically. The void of space doesn't kill her or Leia. 
absolutely madness. Ray's character is just, she's even the best pilot in the fucking fleet. You know, a chick who lived on a desert is somehow naturally the best pilot in all the rebellion. Career pilots, man, they got nothing on Ray. It's literally in the film. The Poe dude comes up like, we need you, Ray. You're the best pilot we have. This motherfucker Poe was an ace pilot for the rebellion. And somehow Ray just gets in the Millennium Falcon once and she's better than he'll ever be. The Force. All right. The Force is female. For some reason, this chick is still not happy. And this is what happens when you cater to people like this. You will never please them. Not never. Ever. Never. Do you guys even view us as full people? After digesting this film for a few days, I don't think so. It's one of the reasons why I broke down into an ugly sob so hard. I was bent in half on the floor last night. I was howling like someone was dead. I kept on screaming, it hurts. This chick is mentally deranged. If you see this girl, do not engage her. Do not date her. Don't even look at her too long. She's warped. Do you, you don't even see us as full people. Ray is like the greatest thing to ever happen. They literally destroyed the original Star Wars to make her character arc to be that she was truly the chosen one and not Anakin Skywalker. They erased everything in Star Wars to make a female character to make these type of women happy. And the only thing that happened was they got mad and howled on the floor crying over a f***ing film. Even all right, I'm going to take that back. I did cry on the floor over Choochie. But that's different. That was my dog. I love that dog like a child. I don't give a fuck about Ray or Kylo Ren. <laughs> now I live in a day and age where we need to have smoking regulated to 21. But, you know, if you're 10 and you feel like you're a girl, we're going to give you a sex change, Robbie. You're not old enough to make the decision to smoke. But you are old enough to decide your new gender. At least you can quit smoking. They cut off your dick. There's no going back. Anyway, Emily wrote... I wrote this piece because I cannot overstate how dangerous it is when films like The Rise of Skywalker romanticizes abusive dynamics and perpetuate myths that only serve to benefit abusers and objectify their victims from ever reaching clarity and freedom. What the fuck is she talking about? I do not understand this tweet. I saw a bad movie. This woman saw some form of oppression. The Rise of Skywalker glorifies abuse and assault against women. What? What? She's a Jedi. Kylo Ren was the Sith. I don't understand. All right, I, 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 I see it now. Some of the stormtroopers were women, and they got shot and they died. Therefore, it's abuse against women. But the male stormtroopers dying, that's no big deal. That's Tuesday. Oh, my God. There's really something inherently wrong with this generation it needs a strong male figure to like kind of rein everybody back in but we ain't getting that shit uh i forgot this girl's name because i blocked out her thing she wrote jj abrams and disney a hate letter y'all think you're real cute baiting us with rilo for months and then just give us the f you come on uh, come at me mickey mouse i fucking dare you Roger's <laughs> What are you going to do? Fight a cardboard cut out of Mickey? He's not real. Thank you, JJ, Disney, and Locust Films. Locust. I hate you. I've invested too much in this shit, and you just go and kill him off? How the f*** can you just do that? You people say it's about hope. What the f*** do you know about hope, JJ? How the f*** can say that's it? <laughs> this chick wrote this when she was mad, dude. It's, like, hard to even read it. It's about love. Family and hope. What a load of bullshit. Y'all think Rain was wrong? Oh, Ryan. But she wrote Rain. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Come on now. With what he did with The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi was a masterpiece compared to that crap you turned up with. The Last Jedi is so about hope. And you just took that from us. You from Ben, Boing. you, JJ. What was the last? No, the, the rise of whatever. The, I don't even know. The Last Jedi was not about hope. The Last Jedi was about Ryan Johnson making a film and sh directly on all the Star Wars fans. Dude was running around saying people didn't like Empire Strikes Back 
when it came out. Bullshit, Wah. Brian. Wah. You, JJ. Daisy said that it would not be as controversial as GTO, Game of Thrones. My ass. I'm disgusted how Disney and Lucas really thought that this would sit well with people. No wonder Adam did not want to promote his shit. I don't think I ever will be able to watch Star Wars again. Thank you for destroying the best four years I have ever had in fandom. Thank you, JJ, Disney, and Lucasfilms for destroying everything. She's only been a Star Wars fan for four years, which means her idea of Star Wars is the new trash trilogy. I pity her because she has no taste. Here is, I'm only going to read a few of these because it's just that stupid. It's like some sort of self-help post for people who are experiencing trauma from the rise of Skywalker, Rilo dying. God damn, man. I remember when people felt trauma at 9-11. This is 9-11 for this current generation. That should scare you. Hi, Rilo friends. People saying they have physical symptoms like nausea, trouble sleeping, body aches and headaches. That's your body responding to grief and stress. So if you felt a little off, it's because your body is helping you work out the miserableness. It sucks, it's hard, and your body is helping you. Make sure you're helping it too. If you're having trouble eating, don't shoot for a full meal. Try and eat little snacks, three bites every now and then, or minimal swallowing food like yogurt or soup. Try to go on walks to get your blood flowing or stretch if you can't get outside. Try something methodical with your hands. Play music on an instrument, crafting, cooking even. If you can't eat the food now, you can store it for later. My God. This dude is literally talking to people as if someone in their family died. Like this is the sort of stuff you expect to hear when your father or your mother dies. Not when a fictional character on a movie drops dead and the actor's totally fine. Hell, he's even in better movies. I was then made aware of a Reddit that, uh, I don't know what to make of it, honestly. It seems like it's crazy as cat piss. Guys, seriously, do not join this Reddit. I gotta get out of this rabbit hole. This rabbit hole consists of, I guess, crazy Rilo fans talking about how, I don't know what this guy's name is. Is, is he Adam Driver? I don't know. How basically... His wife, he's not happy with his wife. He's happier with Ray or what? I don't know, dude. Like, good luck making sense of this. The cutest couple. Happy he was kissing Daisy in Revenge of the Sith or Rise of the Skywalker or whatever. His smile pales in comparison to this who looks like he is about to run. Ah, yes. He's at an opening with his wife in Let's face it, he's happier with Daisy, you guys. We gotta make this happen. His smile reads, SOS, help me. <sighs> help me, why am I looking at this? Gosh, my eyes bleed. I will have nightmares tonight, yes. Adam Driver is not with Ray. How terrible the world is. This is the happy couple. What a beautiful smile. That's the smile of someone who is deep, crazy, hopelessly in love. You would never see him smile and passionately kiss a woman like this with his wife. Yes, he's so much happier with Daisy. It's a f***ing film, you nut. Check his hands on her neck. So delicate, so intimate. To me, this smile was from Adam to Daisy and not Ben to Ray. Okay, now we're tipping over into nuttiness. We're no longer about Rilo, we're about Adam Razy. I just gave them a new name. It wasn't enough to have the fantasy, now they really need it in real life. Like, do you remember when we baked the BB-8 cake together? Ah, uh, oh my god. It is sad to think that their affair is done. There is a post on this thread that believes that maybe Ben's ending was to solve the heaviness of having to deal with your ex-lover? My crazy guests in episode 8, their affection to each other was a secret. But when filming episode 9, more people including JJ and Disney were aware of it. They want to cool down the relationship 
at least in front of cameras, to avoid Fisher Harrison thing, which affects Star Wars movies. Besides, a married man shouldn't take most criticize. That's why he's almost absent in the following Star Wars campaigns. Besides, a married man should take most criticize. The fuck is that? Gorgeous smile. Why don't we see it outside of movies? Because apparently his secret place is anywhere far from JT. Damn, that's sad. His choice. He should leave JT and go after Daisy. Ah, he should leave his wife. Okay. Yep, actually read it blind item somewhere. That they'd already split, but we're waiting to finalize it until after Star Wars award seasons passed. I'm still waiting on that. And that would be a glorious day where these two can finally be happy. Dude, there's like pages of this, bro. Oh my god. I'm just going to read one more and I think I'm pulling the ripcord on this. I've had it officially. To be honest, I feel that Adam treats Daisy like Kylo treats Rey. I'm not talking about fanfic or Rilo thing. What I mean is that Adam really cares about her and is a big giant softy when he's around her. Since he's like eight to nine years older than her, he has this gentle and protective intuition towards her. You know, like a lover, but also a mentor slash teacher. He probably has this kind of feeling towards her because Daisy really treats him like a man, a real man, which he has never felt like this in a long time or even forgot how to be himself after being controlled and suppressed for half his youth. My goodness, why this all sounds so familiar. I think he totally meant it when he said he totally can relate to Kylo. Though Daisy, we know now that Adam also can be playful. Aw, fireman's hauled. That's so romantic and sweet. It's like a bridal carry that only your boyfriend or husband will do. I believe I have now contracted stage three cancer. Reading this. This is why you can't let women lead. You can get mad at me if you want, but there's a lot of crazy chicks out there. Like for real, normal men. There's more normal men than crazy dudes. A normal guy looks at Twitch dots and goes, this is fucking stupid. A crazy dude gives a Twitch dot all of his money because he believes he needs to help her out. Meanwhile, she's making more cash than him. These chicks are coming up with their own reality based on Adam Driver and Daisy Riddler. Daisy Riddler, forgive me. And the funny thing is, Adam Driver isn't even a hot dude. I can understand chicks losing their mind back when Brad Pitt was in Legend of the Fall or Fight Club. You know, Johnny Depp when he was young, I remember chicks losing their mind. You could look at him and go, yeah, that's a good looking guy. I wish I was half as good looking as him. Adam Driver, I look at and go, there's nothing special here. Maybe I need to start acting. <laughs> Shit, I could have been a better Sith Lord than him. I'll probably be hunted down by angry Adam Driver Reddit posters. Oh my God, they're attacking the shit out of his wife. Hopefully there'll be a photo shoot release. I expect magazines to be full of stuff next week. Both their faces look miserable at what should be a highlight night for Adam. He was in the last Star Wars movie. Could you dare think that he just, he's not proud to be in it? He has sad dead eyes and her Botox face can barely crack a grin. Notice how like women are completely fine with throwing other women under the bus for looking old and whizzing. But God forbid a guy goes, no, she looks old. And all of a sudden you're an ageist, you're a sexist, but when women do it to each other, it's fine. Ugh, his wife is old and nasty, cracky face. Ugh, Botox. Daisy Ridley is so young and firm and fresh and juicy. She's perfect for Adam. She's on Botox with so many wrinkles. She is the she snook. Oh my God. These chicks are fun. I'm done. I'm done. They're like completely destroying Adam Driver's wife. Oh, that pretty much confirms it for us all. The Twilight fan base has now merged into the Star Wars fan base. Thanks, Ryan Johnson. Thanks, J.J. Abrams. And above all, thank you, Kathleen Kennedy. I hope you get fired. And to end on a positive note, The Last Jedi. Star Wars fan edit, altering the ending. Having exhausted all their energy in an attempt to destroy Star Wars, Kathleen and Ryan faded away, never to be heard from again, and everyone lived happily ever after. That's the way... The Rise of Skywalker should have ended. Kathleen Kennedy and Ryan Johnson with J.J. Abrams fading into nothingness. And you know what? Take Bob Iger with him.